And now, it's time for another Dice Tower review with Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Melody, and this is my dad, and today we're going to be talking about the game Ghost. Yeah, not Ghost, but Ghost. This is designed by Richard Garfield, who's most well known for Magic the Gathering and for um, Robo Rally and King of Tokyo. Um, this one is nothing like any of those games. It's a simple card game. Let me show you how it works. Here is the game board, or the game box in a sense. It's one of these magnetic boxes, uh, you know, which opens up and lays pretty much flat. You bend it back a little bit, there you go. This is where you'll be playing cards over the course of the game. In here you have your discard pile, and then you have what is called the crypt. Now players are going to be dealt a handful of cards, and these cards are going to show uh, different monsters that are in this game. For example, here's Frankie Jr. Uh, and he's a value of two, or a uh, baby doll, which creeps my kids out, and value of five. And on your turn, you will play a card into the cemetery here. Now, when you play a card into the cemetery, you must play a card that is higher or the same as a previous card. So if I play a seven there and the th next person plays a 13 and then the next person plays a 14, I can play the same number, 14 on top of that, or I play a higher number. If I cannot do so, I will then draw a card from the crypt and hope that it's higher. It's not. So then I take all these cards in my hand. You can also just take all the cards in your hand anytime that you want to. Now when you play cards, you can play more than one card at a time. You can play two or three cards as long as they're the same number. And if you do that, then you must take another turn. And if you ever happen to be able to play four of the same card, then you basically blow up everything and you can play that on top of anything. There's also special cards that can be played. You can play an X with another number. So let's say I have uh, an 11. I can play both of these together and make it two 11s. That's Miss Copy. She can only be played with another one. An 8, when you play that, reverses the turn order. It goes back to the next person. When you play an 11, you clear all the cards that are in the cemetery. They just go away into the discard pile. When you play a 3, or a 12. These are mean ghosts. You can't play any other ghost on top of them unless it's a red. So if you play a 3, I can only play another 3, or I can play a 12. On a 12, I can only play a 12, or I can play someone who's not afraid of ghosts, like Scooty. He can be played on top of anything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 14, you can play Scooty on top of it. So he basically resets the numbers when you play him. Or you can play a Kitty, which will pass your turn. So let's say um, someone has played an 8, I don't have an 8 or higher, so I play this. I skip the next person's turn, and the person after that then plays on top of the 8. So it's basically a, I showed you there, a reverse and a skip. Now players are going to keep doing this until the cards in the crypt run out. When the cards in the crypt run out, midnight strikes. Now, players have some cards in front of them that they've had in the beginning, since the beginning of the game. This card is called your library. You're not allowed to touch them, but now, once the crypt is out, you keep playing the same way, except when you need to draw cards, you don't draw from the crypt, you draw from the library. And add them to your hand or play them or what have you. Once all the cards from your library are gone, and all the cards from your hand are gone, then you've won the game. Or you've won a round and you take some tokens, depending on you know, if you want to play more rounds or not. So that's basically how the game works. You can set up and play multiple games or you can go play a different game. Now this game is based on a card game that's not that uncommon. In fact, it has a very similar feel to a game by Reiner Knizia called Pigpile, which was produced by r, &R Games. And that one, it was very similar where you, you put down cards and you, and you were taking pigs and losing pigs and trying to get rid of pigs. I mean, there was differences between the games, but most of the mechanics were the same. Like I said, this is not much like a typical Richard Garfield game. Uh, instead, it's basically like, I would put this in the family kind of games you, you buy that are like Uno style. What did you think of the game? Um, I liked the game and the artwork was pretty cute. Um, yeah, we're in some kind of 
zone now where people, the, the cutesified horror is what people like. But anyway. Um, it was an okay game. Like, it didn't really have that much strategy because you never know what card that someone else is going to put down. Yeah, really, I mean... Always random. Like, I have no idea what's going on, <laughs> usually. Yeah, it, it's, it's really light, folks. I mean, it seems complex. Oh, all these different cards do different things. And it is cool that they do those things. But this is basically another version of Uno or that style of, of game where people will sit around and say, aha, I skipped your turn. Aha, I played a reverse. Aha, I played a 13. Do you have a 14? No, then draw a card. I mean, really, it's just a variant of that genre. The difference being that it has some cool artwork and there's a few more special abilities than you're used to. Any other th thoughts? No. I like the box cover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, these magnetic box cover things are really great. Uh, this is something Aiello does uh, with their games. They did with the Dwarf King and other games, and I like it. It's a great way. It keeps the box closed. Oh, more companies need to do that. But artwork's good. I like it. It's light. It's definitely for families, but I don't love it for myself personally. I would only bring this out in situations if people wanted to play kind of a mindless game or a bodyless game. Final thoughts? No, I already said mine. <laughs> okay, well then we're done. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.